Uh, hello everyone, I'd like to in, invite you to the Aussie Live and our presenter now is Anne Merchant. Now most of us know Anne, she has been networking us all up slowly over the last few years, so it's really an honour to be moderating for Anne. And her session title today is going to be called The Network Educator. Now first of all, a little bit of housekeeping and I'd like to say a big thank you to our sponsors. Uh, I think they've uh, helped us have a really wonderful weekend this weekend. We'd like to thank Blackboard Collaborate, uh, of course, Coach Carol, The Learning Revolution, Shambles, and of course, the Size of Academy, and of course, the team at the Australian E-Series that have made this possible for you. So without further ado, I think we'll invite Anne to the presentation platform. Thank you very much, Anne. Please come ahead. Thanks, Janita. I always love to see where everybody around the world, around the world, there's probably not many outside Australia and Asia because the US is asleep. But if you look at that pointer on the left hand side of the toolbar, click on that, then click on the emoticon and show us where you're from. So I know my good friend Veronica is in the room, who's from Malaysia. So Malaysia, um, Veronica, are you able to grab one of those emoticons? Yes, thanks. <laughs> okay, so we're mostly from Australia which is great because sometimes our network is beyond their own country and I think it's important um, to have a network locally, nationally and globally. Just first of all, if you've got a QR reader or a, a smartphone, phone, mobile phone, um, if you've got that QR reader, you should be able to capture this image and it will take you to this Google document. So I might drop the link in for that Google document because I've got lots of resources in there and I will add to them. So maybe if you um, make sure you save or bookmark that link somehow, that would be great. Most of you know me, I think, but just very quickly, I teach in a small prep to year 12 school in country Western Victoria, Australia. Our students are culturally and geographically isolated. I live on a farm. The closest town for us to go shopping is 30 minutes away driving. So I feel isolated at times too. But with technology and the power of networking, my students and I are really at the middle of the world. This just shows you our back gate to the school, so you can see how rural we are. If you walk out the back gate, that's what you would see, the beautiful paddock, the cows. But the students do have a one-to-one -one, uh, netbook or laptop programming. I'm going to give you two minutes. Do you think networking is important and why is it important? So if you could write either on the board, now we might need to give you, uh, can you write? I think you've got the markers. Either the chat yeah, or on the whiteboard, we'd love to know, is it important and why? Because you know, maybe some of us aren't terribly networked, although I do think we are. So let me give you two minutes. And if you are networked, what has it meant to you? What impact has it had? Has it had any? So if you cannot work out the whiteboard tools, just drop it in the chat because we'll watch it there and we might be able to copy and paste across onto the whiteboard. Hello Sandra and welcome. We're just taking a bit of time to all write on the whiteboard and say why we think networking is important. Oh, I like that one, it helps us determine if our practice is current. For me, it's so difficult to go to professional development that's in a physical venue because I live so far, my school's got to give me um, CRT replacement for the day, it costs me money. I usually have to get accommodation as well. So I think professional development, if you can get that through networking, and just uh, judge where we are in relation to the latest thinking, that's really important. It is powerful. Who wrote that? And I'd love to know why you think it's powerful. Why is it powerful? Veronica, you, why do you think it's powerful? Oh, hi Sandra, welcome if you're Veronica's friend. Because I agree, it is extremely powerful. But we need to tell some people why. I'll put that down there. Okay, how we go? We're nearly all done. 
between them might still be writing. It does give job opportunities. Now, a fantastic site that I think I forgot to put on my slides is LinkedIn. And I've actually been asked to go for interviews through LinkedIn because of my profile on there. So there's all those sorts of things. I shall keep going. These are some of the things that I thought uh, was really important for us to be networked. I think eventually we are all going to be Googled or stalked. Someone is going to look for us. Someone's going to look for something they need to know. And it might be us who appears there. I had a student Google me. Um, he did accounting and he found me on SlideShare, would you believe? He left a message and he wanted me to help him with his accounting because he didn't think his teacher at his school was giving him as much help as he needed. That was just some of my um, points, but we might put some of those on that Google Doc later. I think when we are networking, or I know when we're networking, these are our key considerations. We need a digital badge or a brand or an avatar, uh, uh, you know, something that identifies us as us, that it's positive, that it is actually transparent to a certain degree. Um, we need that network to be able to do all the things we just said. And we definitely need an online space. Um, and then I'm going to show you some stories from my classroom, and I hope some of you. Uh, <laughs> Shingo, sorry, I'm reading that in the chat. Well, congratulations, Shingo. Oh, I know, that was at Perfecting the Blend Conference. Can you ever get your one certificate? Um, okay, so let's go very quickly. Here's some digital badges. So when we look at these people, uh, give me a smile if you recognise any of them. How many do you recognise? Because they haven't all got photos. Smiles, Joe smiling. Do you know any of them? Uh, I don't think I put mine on there, so you wouldn't know. Oh, so did I? Yeah, I did. I, <laughs> I fiddled with it one day and I lost them. I will put you back. So we've got Julie Lindsay, Chris Betcher, who's our next keynote speaker, um, Vicky Davis who was also a very um, important part of my network. Katrina, uh, maybe we could share some that we think should be really important for us all to follow. Um, but most of all, don't be an egg. So many people we see have no faces. Uh, they look like an egg. When my student um, registered for Twitter, he was so alarmed that he looked like an egg. So I think it's really important to have either an avatar or our own image and that that should be consistent because that way we can be known, identified wherever we might be online. What do you use for your avatar? Can we take a minute and can you write on the whiteboard? Have you got your own photograph? Did you design a little avatar? So this is the equivalent of our picture online. So we'll give you a minute. What is your avatar? So if you're on uh, Facebook or Twitter or um, and then, what would I see as you? Is it a photo? So can we all just write on the whiteboard? We may have different photo, uh, avatars for different um, spaces. Katrina, do you want to grab the microphone? So to write on the whiteboard, you just need to look at the tools, which are just here somewhere to the left of the whiteboard, it's a little long toolbar and there's a letter A. So if you click on the letter A, you should then be able to click on the whiteboard and write your comment. And so I'd love to know if you use um, online spaces with your students, no tools for you. Have we all got tools? Wait a minute, some of you might just lose it, but you'll get it back. Can you write? Let's try that. Have you? If so, can you just write on the whiteboard now or is it stopped? No, it's stopped, wait a minute. When we come into the room, they're all, um, yeah, that should be right now. I think everyone's got chat comments there. Oh, love it. Here we go. Here's the actual avatars of PA. Fantastic. Let's give you a few more minutes. Anyone else got their avatar? They can click copy and paste. And I might be able to, oh, I have mine up. Mine's at the top in Blackboard Collaborate up there. You can see me. 
So if we if we scroll down this little bar in the participants, many of us have come in with a profile. So if we're on the same computer mostly, uh, we should perhaps try and upload a photo. So to add your profile in this room, you go to edit, so you go to right click on your name. So if you right click on your name, you should be able to choose edit profile. So if any of you want to add that and your contact details, that's great. Well done everybody, thank you. Um, the next important thing to consider with your badge, first of all it's your image or avatar or picture. How do you choose your username? We have so many online sites that we can be members of. What do you do for your username? How did you choose it? So can we give you a minute to share that? Or what advice would you give to someone else now that you know what you did? So Sue has teach. I've known you for what, six, seven years? So do you want to tell us why you chose Taste Teach and how did you choose your little avatar? Grab the mic. Okay. Um, back when I started using the internet a lot with the students and blogging, I thought, well, I needed to have an avatar to use as a role model for the students because I didn't want them to use their own pictures themselves. So in my first blogging lessons, I would teach them to create an avatar. So I used Moa Roo avatar and created mine, which was a little grey-haired lady with glasses. I'd just been to Samoa at that time, so I had the nice pink flower in the hair. I always had a cup of coffee in my hand and I love wearing thongs on my feet. So that's how my avatar came about. And wherever you see that on the internet now, that's me. The TAS Teach was, at that time, there weren't very many teachers in Tasmania um, doing anything on the internet, so I decided I'd use TAS for Tasmania and Teach for Teacher. I did get some people in other chat rooms that I'm in thinking it was taste each um, until I broke it down and said it was Taz Teach. Oh wow, thank you Sue. Joe Fry, have you got a microphone? Why have you just kept yourself as Joe Fry in most places? Have you got a microphone? Just grab it and tell, grab it. And tell it. Yes, for me it's not quite as important to, um, you know, I can put a picture of myself and, and Joe and Fry, which is half of Fry Tag, um, because I'm not in a classroom situation, so um, I'm not needing to make an avatar. Um, so, so that's why, you know, just part of my name and, um, and then it just sort of, but carried on to all the other places that I was using it. Uh, Janita, do you, are you there? Do you update your photo regularly or do you tend to keep the same one everywhere you are? Do you want to respond, Janita? I actually have three photos that are spread out around the different websites uh, around about the period of time that I created whatever I'm working on. So the one I've got on the Blackboard Collaborate Room is probably the most current. Uh, another one I used that was about two years ago. So as I get older, I update the photos. Uh, but I use my name and my photo because I work in adult education and people tend to like to see who I am. They don't trust me being an avatar. What an interesting comment, Janita. Um, that's really interesting to hear. So, have you got another comment? Um, yeah, when you do create your avatar, so that it can be seen in all things, like when you leave a comment on any type of blogging platform or any type of website thing, wherever you need to leave a comment, if you go to Gravatar, I think it's gravatar.com, it associates your avatar with your email address. And that way you don't always have to be filling in things all the time. So that's gravatar.com, I think. 
So if you could put that in the chat, that would be great too. Now, Veronica's made a really interesting comment. It depends. And I'm going to tell you about my username next. Veronica, have you got a microphone? And would you like to explain why you said it depends or all depends? Are you there, Veronica? Anyway, maybe you could put that in the chat. I'll just see if she tries to grab a mic, because uh, Veronica's in Malaysia. Uh, Veronica's going to talk. So maybe you could tell me, Veronica. I'm going to show you my dilemma. These are some of the usernames that I'm known by. Uh, my school ID is this one. So for all my logons and usernames related to school, to my EduPay, my EduMail, et cetera, that's my username. And I have learned it off by heart. But other, um, and no one I don't think would be able to copy it. But way back, I chose Merch. And that would have been seven years ago. It's easy to spell. It's quick. My real name, very few people can spell unless they know me well. Students trip up on it all the time. But then I found there were other people around the world that actually use that same username. So I had to grab another. So my most common username online is Mercher. So my blog, my teacher blog is um, Mercher. I'll just put that in the chat and we'll all share ours in a minute. So most of the time now I'm Mercher. I would love to be my own name. I was so sceptical, so concerned about um, safety features of being online when I first started that I didn't even think of doing that. But if I'm on Twitter, if I use that as my username and you wanted to reply to me, that would take up half the 140 characters. <laughs> I should go. Don't tell people that. You tell us what your number is. But I do think those profiles are crucial now. Um, so many times when people say, for example, on Twitter want to follow me, I go straight to their profile. And if there's not much in there, I don't follow them. Because you don't know, are they a spammer or are they just being so safe and cautious they don't even want us to know, um, you know any more details about them. So I think there has to be a balance between transparency and privacy. But when you do log on to your online sites, these are just some of the profile um, areas that you might find. So you usually look for a little person. If you click on the down arrow, you can usually go in there and edit your profile. So I'm a faceless person there or an egg, but I think I've rectified that on SlideShare. This used to be my old avatar, but I've updated that now too because I think I've aged since I first started that. So I think in your profile, it gives authenticity, it gives visibility, and you probably want to attract attention. Because you, I do, and you should, want to network, make connections with lots of other people, learn from them and with them. So I think that in any profile there should be a blog or a website URL, because when I go to see if I want to follow that person, I will go to their actual blog and just see, are they um, authentic, think you die, or whatever, and then maybe follow them. I think if you're on Twitter, your Twitter handle is really important to put in there. And I think you should share your passions, your interests, and what you do. What do you think should be on a profile? Wait a minute, I might have given you a oh, I might have given it to you in a minute. Just the other alternative is that you can now get online digital badges or sites that you actually summarise about. You know, give a little summary of yourself and maybe links to more that tells me about you. So one of them is Flavors Me. Does anyone have a Flavors Me online business card or whatever you would like to call them? Tick or cross or a smile or a frown. And the other one, so Jess McCulloch, one of my good teaching colleagues, um, she uses Flavors Me. So you can see some of the things that she can add in there on that business card. She's got a Twitter ID and it will come up with the latest tweet. She's got a blog address, her LinkedIn account, her Flickr photos, YouTube. So you could just click on each of those and go and find out more about it. Oh, okay, someone might quick find me the URL because I'm not sure I'll put on the Google Doc. 
Um, another one, I don't know if I put that up, is called About Me. And that's rather nice too. It's just like a business card that you would give out to people. Instead, when you're Google, they actually see your business card. Um, I'll see if I can grab those URLs for you in a minute or someone else might be able to find them. Does anyone else use an online business card? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. All the time when we're online, though, I think these are some of the most crucial things to think about. You know, um, and netiquette, the way we behave. Remember, a lot of us have got different ideologies, cultures. We come from different countries, different ways of thinking. Um, and always take care. I always say that to my students. That digital footprint is so vital um, to all of us that we have a, a strong online presence. That our behaviour is always appropriate. Um, any photos we use, and my students will often grab a little photo for their avatar, but they forget um, to look. You know, whether it was a Creative Commons, was it, were they able to use it or not? And this is a really hard one to teach students. Plagiarism. They think what's on the internet is theirs to use as they like. Thanks. So yeah, that's some of the sites that you can use. See, I think it's vital once you've got your badge, once you've got your username. Oh, did you people did you share your usernames? We did, didn't we? How many of you um, have got a LinkedIn account? So, do we all know what LinkedIn is? If you look on the um, down below your name, you'll see a little smiley face emoticon, then a person with a clock, hands up, and then a tick or a check. So if you've got a LinkedIn account, could you click the tick? So a green tick will go by your name. And if you don't, a red cross. Um, I think LinkedIn is one of the biggest online uh, professional spaces there is. And there's so many people to meet and connect on there. Um, so it's like the professional version of Facebook. So I'm using that more and more now, but I'd love to learn more about it. Um, so I would definitely um, put your profile up there and make sure you're out there connecting. Uh, jo, have you got a comment? Um, I have a, a LinkedIn, but I only used it a very little bit when I first started it. And the main reason was that I have an information service, which I um, aim to be unbiased and etc. And on LinkedIn, they were all wanting you to, um, well, guarantee the quality of something or the, um, you know, uh, to um, approve of them. And, and I didn't necessarily want to be um, doing that. Um, and so I haven't used it. Okay, Joe. So do you mean uh, like I know they'll often ask me to verify that a teacher's course is went to well or they're in education, but I often ignore that. She can go. I've got offered quite a few job interviews, mainly to teach over in the um, Middle East. I would love to be able to do that, but I've had to knock them back. But often people are searching for people to present, wanting to know if you're skilled in certain areas. They'll make contact. If you're looking for a particular speaker for school, I know a friend of mine got um, a QC to talk to a legal studies class. So there's lots of ways in which we could probably make LinkedIn quite powerful. Okay, um, Jeanette, can you just publish that poll to the board, please? That was LinkedIn. Then I'll clear the tip. How quick can you be? Um, or shall I just clear yeah, say? Let's clear that. What about Facebook? How many of you are on Facebook? A tick or a cross, please. Um, that doesn't mean you're actually active on Facebook, just are you on me? And we, start, and we need a cross if you're not. So that red cross comes when you click the little black drop down box. Okay, so we might publish that one to the board, um, Janita. Sometimes your username and your avatar and that might be different on Facebook because a lot of people use probably Facebook um, to connect with their family and friends. 
rather than their professional associates, etc. Um, and the mean. So, how many of you have actually joined the Australian Educators site or Classroom Two or some of the other memes that are around? Can you just give us a tick or a cross? So it's kind of like a real networking site where you can have discussions, um, you become a member, you can connect with others, friends, and etc. Okay, a few. So maybe we put that on the board, and the rest we're going to look at as we go through. So I'll just give you a minute to do that. This on the Facebook, wasn't it? Okay, let's go on to the next one. This is my LinkedIn profile. So this shows the text that you can show on LinkedIn. And it also lets you input, like, give the links to your slides, share your blogs, etc., and allows you to put that up on your space too. So I've tried to tell people a lot about me, but it's all educational on this site, because I see this as a very professional site. Um, and we've actually got a heading to go to if we want to edit that profile. How many of you, uh, uh, I was going to ask you with the links in the profiles, but I've done that, haven't I? The other thing, the other space that I think you need is a teacher blog um, or a blog. So let's have a look. How many of you have actually got blogs? This one we do want to know. So this is your own blog, not necessarily a class or student. Do you have your own blog? Oh, did I have five hundred connections? Well, really good. I don't even know how many I've got. Okay, so hang on. So, you maybe this one I'd like to have on the board. Um, oh, not so very many. I think it's really, really important. Um, once you want to follow me or want to connect with me, I go and check out your space online because I do want to know that what you say you are doing, you are actually doing. So thanks for sharing your blog addresses in the chat. I'd love you all to do that if you've got one. So on my blog, I tend to document what I'm doing. I'll often share what was successful in class. And I love seeing it when other teachers share what was successful for them. Because I might be able to adopt it or modify it, etc. Shingo, I really want to do a LinkedIn for Tech Talk Tuesday. Carol, um, is Carol in the room? She might be setting up the other one. Uh, she's really good on LinkedIn. She had a session on that at the beginning of the year. How many, oh, uh, let's clear that. How many of you have actually got a class blog? So this is if actually, you're actually actively teaching in the classroom and you've got a blog where you either share what your students are doing. So I have just a little bit mine. So I've, I've got lots of different, I used to have a class blog for each of my classes. But well, I found it really hard work to keep them all up to scratch. So this is my teacher one, uh, which is just Merch. That was my really old um, username. And I tend to use it as my learning platform. So my class instructions go on there. I've got links, videos, movies embedded at times for students to see. I've got a page for cyber safety, uh, for code of conduct. So that students or parents can go back there and see, you know, um, any details on those topics. And all of my students from year five or four, right through to year twelve, if I have them, have their own individual blog. And I think that's really important for them and their digital footprint. And you know, also for their e-portfolio, that they've actually got something really positive on the internet that they can share for the future or to show their progress over time. Um, Janita, can you change the polls to A, B, C, D? We probably asked for this in the chat, but you know, I'd be interested to see how many of us have got all of them. So where that tick and cross was, there's now another A, B, C, D. Click on the little drop down menu and the letter that you chose will go beside your name. So Sue and I have got all, some of you may not have a class, so it might be appropriate to you. Yeah, Joe's got a great blog for um, gifted students, which is always with you. Okay, Janita, maybe we put that one on the board too. We've got a mixture here, probably because of our background. 
Now that reminds me, in the chat, can you please state where you are from, what country, and what your interest in, is in education? Are you a teacher? Are you a coordinator? A community educator? Or what? So I don't think we've even done that to share what we do. And when you've done that, you might like to put your blog URL on the board or in the chat. And whichever ones you want to share, you can put in there. So we want to know where you're from, who you are, where you're from, what your interest is in education. And if you want to put yeah, your blogs up on the board, that would be great. That's going through me. Okay, anyone else want to use a whiteboard or else I'll put it onto the next slide and let you use the chat. So have you got yours? Um, I'd like to write to put the student blogging challenge in there too because um, yeah, that's great. If you want to know how to blog or if you don't know how to blog with your students, join Sue's student blogging challenge. It's fantastic. <laughs> Veronica, I hope you get a blog. I think yours would be wonderful. It would be so colourful. You'd share all sorts of things about Malaysia that we'd probably love to own. With the blog, I found that I can create a network because the blogs allow conversations and comments. So um, I'm going to show you some examples of how I've been able to network further or get a lot of help from the comments that come on a blog. Before I do that, is everyone familiar with what a blog is? Do we all know what a blog is? Can you smile or frown if you don't? So a blog is really your own web page that you can adapt and um, use to share what your passions are, your interests, what you're doing, etc. Okay. Last two years ago, I had to teach prep. So they are five-year-olds. Remember, I'm a secondary teacher really by nature, and I te taught Year 7 to Year 12. So to teach practice was this huge challenge for me, completely different style. Um, I had no idea what they could do with technology, and everyone said to me, they are too young for technology. Well, I wrote a blog post about that on my blog, and I think I ended up getting about 15 comments on the bottom of it, which I don't have shown here, but it is on this Google document. So if you grab the link to this Google document, I've got all my resources on there. So I got about 15 comments from teachers across the world encouraging me to teach them and telling me some great things to do and use with the little ones, some great sites to go to, kinder chats to follow, etc., etc. So I love that. When I went to um, travel one year, I couldn't buy Easter eggs in the country I was in. And I kind of went into culture shock because I had no Easter eggs in my family. I thought I'd buy them once in the country. So I wrote a blog post about that because I'm sure many of our students who come from other countries and cultures or visiting teachers often experience that too. And I got this connection with Vivid Hunter, who I had no idea who she was. And she told me how she was going to, her mother, I think, was going doing a survey on this and wanted to research it more. So the network expands and gives you people who have similar interests. With my students, um, they each keep a blog, and I like them to document what they're doing, especially in technology with me. So we have a lot of global connections. So we had a link up with Boston. Um, Lorraine Leo is the teacher's name. And she had her students who were all home in their homes on computers because it was night time for them. We had a professor uh, from a university in Japan, a parent from a, a Japanese parent, an Australian parent, and my students. So Georgia wrote a post on this experience. But look at the comments she got from other people. And in one of the comments, Celia asked her, I'm curious, what did you learn from the other students? So all of a sudden, Georgia 
had to go back and oh so she sorry, she responded to one of Lorraine's comments which I didn't show you there. But this is a response now from Lorraine on her blog. So Georgia had to sorry, Lorraine Leo led this comment to Georgia. But look at all that learning that's gone on with that comment. Lorraine shared what's been happening near her in Boston, USA, etc. And then Georgia had to go back and respond and reply back to them. So she thanked Sebastian. She answered Celia's question about what she learned. Some of the things she learned that she learned and then responded back to Lorraine. Oh, I love her comment there. Um, when my teacher told me Lorraine Leo was linking up with us and her students, my automatic reaction is I know her because we have connected with her before. She has commented back on the kids' blogs at times too. The other space that we might have is a wiki. Now let's give you a whiteboard. Does anyone use wikis for their own like digital portfolios or for students or to share resources? If so, quickly write it on the whiteboard. If not, put it in the chat. And if you don't, maybe you just get across. So which wiki do you use and what do you use them for? Yeah, I find a lot of teachers use wikis as a site for resources so that students can actually grab links, etc., um, have digital like movies, etc. on there. Uh, we use them for collaborative projects, etc. But a lot of people use the wiki for their digital portfolio or their online space. Okay, what online spaces do you have that I haven't mentioned? So I think the most common ones are blogs, uh, wikis. Do you have any other online spaces where you sort of explain what you're about or your network further. And I guess we could really get into a lot of tools here if we had time. Anyone want to share there? Otherwise I'll keep moving on because I guess that time is moving fast. Shall I keep moving? Yeah, wet paint wiki. Okay. I use wiki spaces, but only because I'm really familiar with that one. One of my favourite tools for connecting is Twitter. Now we do need to get a ticker across from you now. Do uh, we've got to change the polling? So just give us a minute. Can you give us a tick or a crop? Are you on Twitter? So I think everybody finds their own niche online. Some love Twitter, some prefer other ways of communicating, connecting, or networking. So we've got a few. So if you're on Twitter, I'd love you to put your Twitter handles in the chat, or even uh, what's my next slide? Just maybe even on the whiteboard there. What's your name on Twitter? And maybe we can follow you at the end of this session or during the session. So with Twitter, it's a whole new language at times. Um, you've got hashtags. So these are like searchable um, terms. So if you put hash Aussie live into Google, Google will probably bring up a lot of the tweets that have been sent out for the conference. So that makes those um, tweets searchable. Um, you can have followers following. You can share a tweet URL. And the other thing I love in Twitter is the list. So when you have a lot of people you follow, you can actually start to put them in the list. So I might have commerce teachers in one list. I might have global educators in another. I might have students on another, etc. So this is some of the hashtags I like. So can I still give you one minute? What hashtags do you like to follow? So this means you don't even have to be on Twitter. Just remember these are some great hashtags where people actually talk um, and share educational viewpoints, etc. So each chat is probably still one of the biggest. Um, so with a hashtag, if you're not really on Twitter, it won't make sense. What does GT chat stand for? Who's that? John? Can you just tell us what GT Chat and Chat Specially are all about? Oh, do you want to grab the microphone um, and speak? Uh, GT Chat is Gifted and Talented Chat, um, but it's run in America, so 
means that very often I have to get up in the middle of the night for it. Though it's not so bad at the moment. At the moment it's um, the middle of Saturday morning. Um, and chat especially, I just ran into, well, I didn't put in the space. So. <laughs> Thanks, Joy. So a Twitter chat is like an online PD or online chat. So there's usually a topic or a theme once a week, once a month. Um, and people just come onto Twitter and follow that. So hashtags is a whole new conversation, actually. So the one I like is a global classroom chat because I'm always keen to see what people are doing to connect globally. And they actually save their chats in an archive. So if you can't be there for the actual chat, you can go back and have a look at what people said, links that they shared, learn a little bit more about what they're doing, etc. So we've got the chats now in the chat. <laughs> so, you know, there's heaps of them now. They've been coming more and more. And I don't know if anyone's got time to find this. So a dreary man in the USA has a great list of chats. And he's also got a great list of hashtags that you might like to search for and see what people are saying. Um, so if you just Google Cyberary Man Tweet Chat, it would bring you up to that page. Um, this Tweet Chat is a, a, a site that you can actually go to without being on Twitter. And if you just key in any of those hashtags, it will give you the feed there. <laughs> like Cyberary Man. I don't know why he called himself that. It's Cyberary Man. So you'll find him. He shares lots of resources and online sites. So very quickly, I'd like to share some of my classroom stories. Because I've got that badge, um, the username, I've got my online spaces, etc. This is what's happened to me. So I'm on Twitter. Because we live so far from Warrnambool, the nearest town, we have great trouble getting experts into our classroom. And if we do, it costs so much money. Um, so we really don't get very many outside people in. Except now we can with technology. So I was looking, I thought maybe there'd be an author out there in cyberspace who would talk to our kids for book week. And notice this is my tweet or my request. I just put hash authors because I really didn't expect to get a comment. But two hours later, I got a response from an author or he said he was. So the first thing I did was look at his profile, search him out and see if he's authentic. And he was. So um, we exchanged details. I asked what age group he had. So we brought all grade four up to year 11 into the library. And he shared his passion for writing for an hour with the students and engaged all those age groups at once. And then he offered to teach the students at lunchtime. I didn't tell you, this man is Christopher Hoetz and he's in New York. So we had to work out the time zone. So he was home from work at night when the day before when my students came in for lunch. And he would give them assignments each week, um, and, and, you know, encourage them to write, give them assignments, topics, etc. We've done that the last two years. So we used Evernote um, to be able to share that work with him. He could read their work immediately, give them feedback, etc. Oh, there's some of the tools we used for that. So Skype for the video conference, Evernote to share folders. He set up folders here. Um, in the end, he didn't really understand where we live. And our kids never understood where he lived. So in the end, we shared photos. And we got a much better picture um, about you know what our life was like. I love this one. Our kids go to Melbourne for work experience. Now they're country kids. Some of them have never been in Melbourne. They've never caught a tram. They have to find their way to work for two weeks without any, um, just only help beforehand. No teachers go with them. So they are really, really quite frightened. So I thought, well, if they've got their mobile device or phone, you know, what apps would they, could they use to help them get to work or any of the other things they might need in Melbourne? So again, I put out a tweet, and I asked for suggestions of apps. But Roland Gesoisen said, hey, why don't you set up a Google document? So that's what I did. So here's the Google document on a screen dump of it. People, lots of people, shared these wonderful apps. And they vary from, you know, where can you find the toilets, 
free Wi-Fi, right through to all these wonderful public transport apps, etc. So that's the living document and the link is on that Google document if you'd like to look at it and add more. But the kids that use the maps on their phones didn't get lost, the rest did unfortunately. Um, networking spaces. I love Classroom 2.0. I seven years ago I think I joined it or six years ago and that's where I met my first great lot of online colleagues and many of them I still work with today. So this is a site that Steve Harkin set up and he then went on to set up a lot more social networking sites. So this is the mean. But look at all the faceless people. You know, you wish they would put their avatar or their photo up on there and they probably have to have a profile to join. But one person who I met through Classroom 2.0 is Lorraine Leo and she has been so good to us. She's very good with Scratch, a programming tool which I don't know anything about. So I brought my grade 3, 4 class into the library where I put the interactive whiteboard and Lorraine got one of her students so the day before, from home with the parents looking on, to teach my students how to create these little sprites in Scratch. So Lana is actually, these are my students here on Skype, and Lana is showing them how to put the code together to create this little sprite. Would you believe the kids actually remembered it? So when they came into class next week, there were enough of them that remembered what she told them, and here are their resultant sprites from Alana in USA teaching them how to scratch. Um, I love projects like International Dot Day. I found this one on Twitter. It's so simple. Kids just read a book called The Dot and then they are creative and create their own dots which are shared globally on site. Very easy, very creative and it doesn't take much time. But back to scratch, we then join a dot project in Scratch. And again, the kids when you give them Scratch at year seven level, push it to the limits and boundaries, way beyond what I knew. So I found Lorraine on Skype. So she was at home the night before and I got my um, iPad. So the students used the front camera to introduce themselves to Lorraine. Then they pulled up the reverse camera to show her their dot, their code, and why it wasn't doing what they wanted it to. So Lorraine helped them, fix up their code and um, achieve the outcome that they wanted. And then we put this on this wonderful World Museum site where students dots from all around the world are placed. So again, check out the links on that Google Doc because it's wonderful. And very quickly, technology doesn't always work for me. With the country and the poor internet access, it often fails. And my link up with Japan that I was going to plan for two lessons fell through at the last minute. So I jumped on Skype where I'd met these people through Skype in education. <coughs> so Skype has put the site up for educators and it's fantastic. You must join that if you haven't. And I, I said, could someone quickly Skype my students so I could think of something else to teach them because I didn't have a backup plan. So lucky um, Steve, who is living maths from South Africa, and David from Chicago, America, were online. And they said to me, why don't we do mystery Skype? And they said, I should set up a Google document where the kids have to then document their learning, their questions, their answers, and where they progress from there but their questions could only have a yes, no answer. So this was a document when I came back from my coffee. They put up the heading, the maps for the kids that actually um, hidden the word Chicago, Illinois and scrambled it up, but my kids thought that was another language. And then the students came up one at a time to Dave through Skype and asked a question. It took them 40 minutes to work out he was from Chicago, Illinois. It was not an easy task. And the link to that document where they documented their progress and learning is on that Google Doc I shared. But after he finished, um, Sean, one of my students, is passionate about American history and doesn't learn enough at school. So he was able to sit one on one with Dave and ask so many more questions about the American laws and the outcomes that intrigued him. So that was really customised learning. One of the online conferences where I have a wonderful 
gained a big network as well. It's a global education conference. So it's just like this one. Um, it's been going for three years, but you get educators from across the world all sharing what they're doing with learning in their countries and connecting with others. So that's another great one. Um, the Global Classroom Project is another wonderful site to network if you're interested in meeting with global educators. And Facebook, lots of education groups to join on Facebook. So if you've joined any um, Facebook groups, I'd love you to share them in the chat if you know what the URLs are. So I've joined the Australian E-Series, Facing IT, which is one of Penny Bentley's, Twitter Ed, um, and quite a few other groups like Apps in Education, etc. A new one on the scene is Mighty Bell. So I don't know if anyone's used this, but the lady that um, co-created the meme actually left Ning and started up Mighty Bell. So this is another site that's really good where you can, it's a bit like a Ning, you can share projects, conversations, uh, create groups, etc. as well. And as I said before, Sue in our room here does the student blogging challenge. Fabulous way to network, to get to know other educators, see what they're doing, etc. Um, gee, Janita, if you've got any, your wikis and anything, could you share them in the chat? And there was a teacher blogging challenge as well, and the, um, the tasks and the outcomes are all still there, the conversations, etc. on that blog. So you just need to Google both those, and I know Sue did share the link for her challenge before. This is that Skype in, Skype in the Classroom site. Um, they Skype themselves get expert speakers now, so you can actually indicate interest, um, be part of that link up. Unfortunately for Australians in Asian times, um, they tend to be a lot American, but there's, a, there's others there that can actually be used. And another one that I love, I don't know if anyone's a member of the Microsoft Partners in Learning, because I do use a PC. But this is a global network, and it's, it's so global that the natural languages come in. So sometimes you don't even understand what the person's saying, because it might be in Egyptian or their native tongue. But I think that's just a wonderful site, that it's got the ability for people to put in their own language, etc. Um, have we got time quick to share? What's your favourite online networking sites? Where do you, where do you join to meet people? So perhaps the chat's going to be the quickest way to share as time is getting on. But because I'm a teacher, the other spot, the other network I have are my students. I learn so much from them. I love it when they come up and tell me, hey miss, did you know you could do this? Or look what I've learnt today. Or look what I've got on my, my phone now, etc. And if we can use that in classroom, because they're using it naturally, um, I think that's just wonderful. So students should never be the forgotten element in a network. Um, I love online webinars because of my distance and isolation. doesn't matter. I can join the Australian E-Series. We've got a blog where all the um, Australian webinars, sorry, that the Australian E-Series run are kept. And then Peggy George does Classroom 2.0 Live, the American one. They're all recorded, so if you miss the live session, you can go back and listen to the recorded one. And of course, we're in the online conference now. But if you're a librarian, there's a librarian's online conference. K12 um, is one that people put up something each day and you watch the screencast or their little video, etc. Um, Reform Symposium is another big one. And my favourite, the Global Education Conference. There's lots of them. So these are some of the sites where I've actually networked and met more people who've got similar interests or who've got questions or who want to share something with me. So I think our time might nearly be out up, but that's where you'll find me online. So I hope I can find you online, and I know I do because many of you are very close friends of mine in a network. So Janita, that's all from me. Thank you everyone. Are there any questions, or it might be time to go to the closing keynote, might not. Oh, thank you very much, Anne. And I think if there's any questions, if you want to quickly put them in the text chat, I'm sure um, Anne's got a couple of minutes that she can answer them. But uh, we'll get you to move over to the next room. That was absolutely wonderful, Anne. You've really inspired me. Um, 
didn't realise um, how the network was so big or how it worked. Uh, very impressive. Thank you very much for making us and including us in part of your network. Uh, now, don't forget, everyone, we have some badges for you to get hold of, please. Uh, when you're finished, don't forget to go and get your badges. Thank you very much, Anne. It was absolutely wonderful. And if anyone's got some quick questions, I'm sure Anne will be happy to answer them. Or, or if they want to, they can put the questions on that Google Doc. You know how I just shared the link in the chat? So if you've got questions here, please ask. I don't know if I missed any or not. I hope I answered them as I went. But I loved you sharing where you network too, because I think that's important. We all learn from each other and with each other. Thanks, Janine. Thank you, everybody. See you later. Um, we'll just close up the room and please go on over to the keynote. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Janine. I'm just going to save the chat so then I'll get out of the room too. Thanks, Janina. Thanks, Alona. Um, Alona, are you, have you stayed? Because perhaps we will be closing the room in a minute. So if you have, just let us know. Maybe just later we just um, take, shut the room, shall we? Oh, did you take her out? Thanks, Janita, for moderating. That was lovely having you. I'm going because I haven't even got into the room for the closing keynote. So thanks. See ya.